Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Fundamental Analysis webinar here with Avatrade. My name is Troy. I'll be presenting. As we get started, let's do a quick systems check. If you would, just type OK in the chat box if you're hearing me clearly and seeing my screen all right. OK, great. Looks like we're up and running fine. Thank you. If anyone has any issues as we go along, feel free to let me know. As always, keep in mind that no one trade is guaranteed to profit. With each trade you take, there's risk involved. So you want to manage risk in a way that makes sense to you. And we'll go through some ideas in that regard uh, on the web trader today with some functionalities that really make risk management uh, quite easy in terms of calculating exposure, potential profit, that sort of thing. And uh, also, obviously, keep in mind that what we're covering is not meant to be taken as financial advisement, but is coming from an educational perspective. Now, real quick, what is fundamental analysis? Uh, basically, it's the news. Uh, it's, it's looking at maybe an economic calendar, regularly scheduled economic events that we know what it'll be about, uh, the day, the time, etc. And typically you have some sort of numbers that come out that you can analyze to help you make a decision as to what direction you might want to trade on a different instrument. We'll go over some examples uh, today on, on our economic calendar, which allows you to do some data crunching from past announcements uh, pretty efficiently. And, and come up with a trading plan based on, on the past data. Uh, and then there are also other types of fundamental news events that occur, could be extraordinary economic events, uh, which could relate to a, a number of different things. In the past, it's been uh, you know headlines about Brexit, headlines about the pandemic, uh, headlines about different wars breaking out in different regions around the world. Uh, anything like this that, that is not necessarily planned or, or known in advance that it will occur, uh, we can get headlines about extraordinary type events that can swing the market one way or another. And, and it's actually uh, something that you can plan for in advance in terms of your trading strategy and, and have maybe pending orders in unique places uh, in anticipation of potential large movements from headlines uh, like that. And we'll, we'll maybe go over some ideas in that regard as well if we have time. And so uh, different types of news that can move the market in different ways and, and we can come up with some different strategy concepts around these different types of, of news. And so uh, we'll start out on our main website and we'll spend our time in the web trader which you access from here in the upper right corner. And the web trader allows you to trade on your MetaTrader 4 and MetaTrader 5 accounts. And if you tend to trade from mobile as well, uh, you also can use our Avatrade Go mobile app found in the major app stores. And it has the same functionalities in terms of helping you with risk management, with signals, with fundamental news, uh, the economic calendar, et cetera, are all available in our app as well. And so it has this similar look and feel to it. Uh, as we have within the web trader. So let's uh, go ahead and get in the web trader. And, uh, you know, there, there are a couple sections we can go to that, that are really useful for fundamental news within the web trader and our app. And I think a good place to start will be the economic calendar. And we'll load it for today's date. And uh, we can take a look at some announcements that have already come in. Uh, and you know, the most recent ones that have come in were out of the European Union. And we can see there was a slew of data that came in uh, worse than expected. And so we can see uh, the inflation rate was a key uh, indicator of economic health and what we see here with the inflation rate is that it dropped more than expected. It was expected to come down 0.2%. It came down a half a percent. And you might think, well, that's bad news. It's you know lower than expected, meaning there's not as much demand in the economy. Uh, but because the inflation rates have been so high, uh, this, as of late, inflationary data coming in with a larger drop than expected from one month to the next or year over year, uh, has actually been viewed as positive. And, and so uh, we'll take a look at the charts in relation to this, but uh, certainly when data comes in worse than expected, 
lower than expected uh, with this type of number, you might see the, the currency uh, weaken in response. And you don't have to guess about that. And you see the core inflation rate also came in lower than expected. It was expected to drop a little, it dropped a lot, okay? And so whether it's month over month, year over year, core inflation rate uh, or the whole inflation rate, everything came down more than expected out of the European Union in that regard, all three of these numbers. And so if we wanna look at the inflation rate month over month, using this uh, tool off here to the right, we can get an idea of how has the movement moved in the past in relation to this announcement, and maybe have an idea of how it would have moved today as the numbers came in. Now I see a question has popped up. Uh, uh, Michael, you're asking, explain the pop-up when you log into the Avatrade platform. I'm not sure which pop-up you're seeing. Uh, if, if you're referring to the Guardian Angel pop-up, that's something that analyzes your past trading and gives you some tips. Uh, and you can activate that if you want, or you can deactivate it. That's up to you. Okay, so, uh, and, and it is possible, I'm sorry, just to backtrack, that you're seeing some other pop-up that's related maybe just to your account. Uh, so you might uh, be a little more specific if that's what you're seeing or not. Okay, so looking at this tool, uh, we can start to look at, based on the, the past announcements, what kind of movement might we expect with the current one? So the month over month inflation rate data out of the European Union, if let's say we wanna look at a certain currency pairing, I have it set on Euro USD for now. Uh, we wanna look a certain amount of time after the event. You can look as little as five minutes or up to four hours. We'll leave it on four hours. And if we look at all of the events, the data is about 50-50. Okay, 42% bullish, 58% bearish movement in the four hours following the announcement, if we look at all the events. But let's be a little more selective. Let's say this event comes in uh, as it did today, below forecast. A larger drop in inflation or less of a rise in inflation than expected, which was what happened today. And so we see then 57% uh, Bullish movement, 43% bearish movement. Again, nothing special, nothing to write home about in my opinion. This is the month over month inflation rate data. I'm looking for like 75, 25, something that gives me uh, a feel that I have uh, an advantage statistically to trade in a certain direction based on how the numbers come in. What if they came in above forecast? Well, then 100% of the time, uh, the euro dropped against the USD. Okay, uh, that didn't happen today, right? Came in below forecast. So let's look at the other data, inflation rate month over month uh, rather than, or I'm sorry, year over year rather than month over month. Okay, we just looked at the month over month. Maybe the year over year has more convincing data one way or another. So if we then say if it comes in above forecast, it's 50-50, not interested in that. Below forecast, 50-50. So th these announcements, the past data doesn't really excite me in terms of uh, year over year, in terms of statistical advantage uh, with the inflation rate and the core inflation rate. But what if I go year over year on the standard inflation rate, which till now we looked month over month on the inflation rate, the year over year we look core. What if we look year over year inflation on not just the core? So let's check this one. Some of them have maybe a, a stronger significance statistically than others. So if we then check above forecast, 100% bearish. Below forecast, 63% bullish. That seems to ring a bell a bit more then. So the historical data shows a statistical advantage to buy if it comes in below forecast in the four hours following the event. And if it comes in above forecast, a strong statistical advantage to sell. So of these announcements that all came in at the same time, the one that shows uh, an up and down statistical advantage depending on the way that the numbers come in, the one that shows the most statistical advantage is the inflation rate year over year, okay? And so how did it come in today? Inflation rate year over year came in lower than expected, okay? And so in the past, if it came in below expectation, you would expect 
two thirds of the time approximately that the euro would then climb against the USD. Okay, so uh, then with with that understanding and understanding that that is how it came in, we can take a look and see uh, has it climbed yet? And if not, there might be an entry point you like because in the past when the data came in like it did today, uh, the the euro has climbed against the USD in, in the four hours following the event, okay? And we can look at how much did it climb. Average range movement, 43 pips. The times that it went up, it went up between 20 and 60 pips. Okay, and so let's see then where the, the chart stands on the Euro USD and see if it makes sense to make a move based on that past data. Euro USD, okay, there is a signal on this by the way. Uh, the signal already reached a key level. You see, it was a sell signal that already came to fruition, so it's already dropped. So this might mean that it's in good position if you were looking to buy, if it already dropped. Uh, I see the one day candle, a significant drop. Let's go to one hour candles. Okay, really large drop in the Euro USD. We can go to four hour candles, see if we're reaching a support level yet. It, it looks like we're not. Uh, I see a support level right down around this area here. By support level, I mean an area where the market hit in the past and went back up, okay? So let me delete this line. Okay, we see in the past this price level hit, went up, hit, went up, hit, went up. Once it went below, it plunged and it became resistance. Once it came back above, it became support, 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 and went back up. So this price level seems like an important price level. So if you feel eventually here the euro should climb based on that past data, then perhaps if you're buying now, you'd put your stop loss below this support level because it's a price that it's had trouble breaking below. And if it does, it, it plunged the last time it went below this price level right here. So if you were buying based on that economic calendar data, then your stop loss could be below this price to have limited risk. If it breaks below this price, you might expect further dropping like occurred in the past. And the economic calendar data says, perhaps the Euro should eventually climb here in the hours following that announcement based on how the data came in, okay? And so uh, if I'm looking at 15 minute candles, I see, that the, the drop has slowed a bit, okay? It was really dropping, the announcements came in, and now we seem to have found a little bit of a bottom on the 15 minute candles, okay? So let's say you were going to buy on this based on the economic calendar data. I click buy, and the fact that it already reached the key level on the sell signal, which if you're following those signals, that would have been a good one. The, the sell signal already came to fruition. Uh, and so having reached the take profit level already on the sell means that perhaps the expectation was that it might not drop further than that with that signal. Uh, it doesn't mean that it wouldn't, that it can't, but uh, it's kind of on the side of expecting maybe a bounce here. To me, this looks like it could push down further Okay, with weak economic data coming out of the European Union, it makes sense that the euro could give further ground. Uh, but if you're trading with the data on the economic calendar, this would be a buy. You might look to take profit at the first uh, major resistance level up, which might be here, 109.58. And again, stop loss we identified could be down here if we want to get below the support level that we saw in the one-day candles, so 108.90 approximately. Okay, so this is a simulation showing what you might do based on that economic calendar announcement, okay? And so we're then going to take a look at what amount are we wanting to risk once we have the setup 
with the stop loss and the take profit, you have to think about, well, how much am I wanting to risk here? Uh, and so the answer uh, is different for, for different traders. Let's say that I know I want to risk uh, 500 per trade, whatever that amount is for you. Now that I have my entry points and exit points uh, set up, now I need to adjust my trade size. So let's lower this to one lot. And I see then I'm risking 250. Okay, so if I wanted to risk 500, then I go two lots. If I wanted to risk less, I put a smaller trade size. So you adjust the trade size now to the exposure amount you're comfortable with and the potential profit amount that you want to go after. Uh, and, and then you're ready to go. Okay, so uh, we enacted a trade uh, in the opposite direction of the current downtrend, which sometimes I, I don't like to do, but basing it on the economic calendar and hoping for the statistics now to show uh, to come true based from what happened in the past. The majority went up in the four hours following announcements that came in with, the, with that announcement coming lower than expected in the four hours following the event. So we've had a, a pullback, uh, a, a drop I should say. So perhaps we're ready for a pullback to fall in line with those statistics towards this direction. Our take profit being here, which is where today's drop started from. And by the way, this drop started from, uh, you know, before some of those announcements came in, okay, or the current announcement that we looked at, okay? And so we'll see. Uh, and let's then take a look at maybe another announcement. Back to the economic calendar. And let's look at events that haven't occurred yet. We looked at one that already occurred. So let's look at one that has not occurred yet. We'll load more of these. Once you get past the red line, you're then looking at events that did not happen yet. And there are some large announcements. By large, I mean they're ranked as high level announcements, meaning high volatility expected, large movements expected potentially after the numbers come in. Uh, these are the ones we tend to focus on the most. And so let's see if any of these have predictable movements based on the prior announcement outcomes that we could maybe look to take advantage of as the data comes in later today. Uh, we can look at the jobless claims, okay? And see if this data is relevant maybe to trade on. Uh, if we look at, if these come in above forecast, two thirds of the time the USD strengthens in the past and pulls uh, the Euro down with over 53 pips range movement. Okay, the one that went the wrong way, one out of three only went 10 pips the wrong way in the four hours after the event. And the ones that went the right way, one barely moved, but one went 67 pips. So basically, if you'd have traded on all three of these in the past in the direction that this data uh, suggests maybe you should, you would have been up about 70 pips and down only. 10 pips, okay, based on the movement after four hours out of all three of these. So 70 pips in the right direction, 10 pips in the wrong direction, uh, and overall two thirds of the time down. Uh, looks like pretty strong statistics to say if this data comes in above forecast, that the data says you should maybe sell the Euro USD in the hours following those numbers coming in, okay? And in the first five minutes, by the way, you can see less than 20 pips range movement, okay? So uh, it's not like you don't have time to get the trade off after the data already came in. You actually do because a lot of the movement occurs after that first five minutes in the hours following, okay? Now, what if this comes in below forecast? The opposite, right? Even stronger data. Three quarters of the time, 75% of the time, the euro climbs against the USD if the data comes in below forecast on the initial jobless claims. So exactly what you might expect. The USD weakened if uh, the initial jobless claims come in uh, below forecast, okay? Uh, if it goes above forecast, brings it down, below forecast, okay, makes sense, would bring it up, okay? We don't have to think about the rationale why. Uh, I, can, I can speculate. Why, why do uh, jobless claims uh, being below forecast cause the euro to climb? 
probably because there's less expectation of rate hikes in the US. Okay, jobless claims are a negative thing, right? If they're below forecast, that's actually good news for the US. Why should the USD weaken 75% of the time, which is what happened here? Likely because uh, jobless claims being uh, below forecast uh, would, would mean uh, less of a need to, to raise interest rates maybe, okay? Uh, but this is speculation as to, and, and, and this, this is the good thing about trading on data. You don't have to play that game in your mind as to why would it go this way? What, what's the rationale? And you can come up with different reasons and rationales. And in the end, if you're using data-driven trading, you could skip all that uh, inside your brain and just go with the data. In which case you'd say, okay, if this comes in uh, below forecast, 75% of the time in the past, the euro has climbed in the four hours after, so maybe that's what I'll do, okay? And you could say, well, what about in the first five minutes? 75% of the time it was the other way. So there's an initial false move the majority of the time. So in that first five minutes, you can grab a nice entry point if you were going to buy because 75% of the time it came down in the first five minutes. And after four hours, 75% of the time they were up. Okay? So uh, you could take huge advantage of this 45 pip range movement by trading in such a fashion in the past. And you have directionality after four hours that's pretty strong, statistically speaking, here to make a decision. Okay? So you can work out a trading strategy now on this announcement that's in just a, a short period of time from now, that if it comes in below forecast, you'll trade a certain way within the first five minutes of those numbers showing. And if it comes in above forecast, you'll trade the other way with, within the first five minutes of the data coming in. Okay, so a uh, very powerful tool here. And, and this, these jobless claims numbers seem to to be strong in terms of indicating which way uh, the movement will go based on how the announcement comes in, okay? And the rationale uh, as to why, is it because of interest rate uh, expectations being higher or lower depending on how the jobless claims come in? Uh, yeah, you can play that game in your mind, but you don't necessarily have to because you can trade purely on the data from the past, okay? And then we, we can also not just look at the jobless claims data, we can look at the other. Okay, personal spending, did it have a role? Okay, and I can show you an example. Personal spending, if it came in above forecast, it's like 50-50, right? And if it came in below forecast, 60-40, okay, but not as strong as 75% one way or two-thirds one way. Uh, this data doesn't seem as strong to make a decision which direction to trade uh, as, as the, the jobless claims data has been in the past, okay? And so you can be selective which numbers, and they're all coming in at the same time here, these ones, which ones in the past have helped, uh, would, would have helped you more to decide which way to trade. And based on the two we just looked at, it's the jobless claims had a stronger indication as to which way the movement would go compared to the personal spending, and we could look at personal income as well, uh, that also I don't think has strong of an indication. 60, 40, if it's above forecast. Okay, this one, if it comes in below forecast, is pretty indicative. Two thirds of the time it drops, the Euro USD drops, if personal income comes in below forecast. So that one you could look at, uh, but it's no stronger data than the jobless claims. And the jobless claims was more consistent data. So I think this is probably the one I would focus on out of these numbers in just uh, a little bit of time from now, a couple hours from now, okay? Let me pause any questions on what we've gone over on the economic calendar in terms of how to use the tools or, or what the data might mean. Okay, I don't see any questions popping up, so I must have been pretty clear. Uh, That Euro trade, continuing with that downtrend, we'll see what happens if, if that support level holds down there or not. Uh, when we opened that simulated trade, I had said it looks like that downtrend is not done and that it was headed towards that support level. It, it, it could have made sense, by the way, to put a pending order down there just above the support level to lower the risk and increase the potential profit on such a move.
Okay, so uh, let's then maybe take a look at some instruments like gold and think about the fact that today's numbers came in uh, showing a drop in inflation in the European Union. Uh, you know, gold's an inflationary safe haven a lot of times. It, you buy into gold when you're afraid of inflation. It can be a safe haven for other reasons also. Uh, but it could make sense that gold could have less buying pressure right now if uh, the markets are kind of cheering that inflation has come down uh, a bit faster than expected in the European Union. And so, indeed, we're seeing that in the past couple hours, gold is pushing down. And it got to quite a high recently. So uh, if you're starting to feel like fundamentally there's less reason, less fear out there to need to buy into gold as inflation is not just in the European Union, but also the U.S. getting more and more under control. Uh, it's not much risk to get your stop loss above these highs that it reached recently and go after a, a, a pullback. Uh, in the downward direction here, maybe on gold. You see, I, I've outlined a support level here from the past that was resistance, 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 and then became support, support. So if indeed this is going to drop, it could head down towards 2005 or so uh, without having to break this support level. So uh, in that regard, if then you're looking to sell on gold based on less inflation out there, less reason, uh, maybe to buy into gold if, if, if some of this rise was an inflationary fear, uh, then we could take a look at take profit down around 2008, not having to break that support level down there. And stop loss to get above these highs, you'd be above 2050, basically. If it breaks above 2050, then uh, the momentum is turned back upward again by then. So let's say 2051. Okay, so going after about double the potential profit compared to risk with this setup. Stop loss then is up here, above 2050. Okay, we'd have to break above all this resistance to hit our stop loss. Okay, and if we want to get above this wick, then maybe we say stop loss 2053, just to clear that by a little bit. Okay, so uh, risking 7,000 or so to make 13,000 plus. Now, again, I had said you probably want to adjust the trade size once you get your uh, stop loss and entry point and take profit set up, then adjust your stop loss, or I'm sorry, adjust your lot size. To the amount that you're willing to risk. Okay, so with one lot, I'm risking 1,500. With 0 0.3, say I should be around 500. 463 to go after 886 profit. If I'm willing to risk 500, I can go a little bigger, 3.0.32, and that puts me at about 500 risk, going after 945 or so profit. Okay, so I. Uh, a move that's directionality based on uh, not just the technical analysis showing a nice resistance level and a downtrend, but also based on maybe the fundamental news situation, having a bit less fear about inflation out there and maybe some reason uh, for uh, people to sell gold off a little bit. Okay. Now, there's another tool we can look at for fundamental news. If we go here, to the market buzz, this is a nice uh, tool to find information pretty quick about different instruments. Uh, Sally, if you're having a problem with your web trader login, uh, please just contact our support team, okay? All right, so uh, we're looking here then at stocks. We also could look at other groups of instruments like commodities, indices, currencies, and it's showing the larger circles are the ones that are trending more, okay? Cryptocurrencies as well, if you're in a region that allows trading on cryptocurrencies. So, you know, if I'm looking at stocks here and I want to know about, I don't know, not necessarily just the ones that are trending most, I could say, well, what's going on with Bank of America, if I can 
find it. There it is, Bank of America. 48 recent mentions online that were found. Could bring that up. Looks like Bank of America is expected to rise 13%. We can look at the trend analysis. Okay, it breaks down the RSI, the, the MACD. These are different indicators. So the technical analysis is here to explain what's happening and showing you the take profit lines where the next resistance levels are expected to be found. It uh, shows you the pivot line that if it breaks below there, probably should have your stop loss below that maybe. And, and then you'd look for further downside towards these red lines if indeed it went the wrong way. Uh, but the current signal is a buy signal. Shows you the price levels and the percent climb expected. Okay. Now, where's the fundamental news? It's over here. Okay. Recent article that Bank of America has a fine for $12 million uh, for reporting false mortgage data. That doesn't sound like good news. But yeah, $12 million isn't much to a company like Bank of America. But then you could scroll down and find are there other articles about Bank of America? Uh, that, that might be positive, that might reinforce this signal. Uh, I see, again, about the $12 million fine. It's the most recent news. Let's see if there's something further down besides that. $12 million fine, $12 million fine. They keep talking about that. Uh, looks like uh, Westwood Holdings has trimmed their holdings of Bank of America. These all seem negative, don't they? The most recent articles are negative. So uh, this is a signal that when I look at the fundamental news, the most recent news, I don't think it's in line with the price rising. And so this is a situation where I might choose to pass on buying on this, even though the trend analysis shows it should rise, the recent articles are negative. People selling the stock, you know, investment groups selling Bank of America, Articles about the company being fined. Uh, sounds like I might wait for a pullback, in fact, before buying. That the bigger deal is that it should rise 13%. The most recent news is negative. So then maybe I say, you know what, let me check out this stock. I expect maybe a pullback when the US market opens because of the most recent news being negative, but the larger trend analysis is that it should rise. So maybe to pull back closer to that uh, pivot level, and you have a better entry point if you were wanting to buy with that trend analysis, uh, you might get a better entry point with that those negative headlines that have come out. So we could then go to the chart for Bank of America. And say, okay, let's have a plan for when the US market opens. Those negative headlines might be just what I need to get a better entry point to go with that buy signal, okay? And so we see uh, the bullish move from yesterday on Bank of America. Look at this climb up, okay? So the signal that it would rise was there yesterday as well, and, and it looks like it was right. But it also looks like it started to pull back at the end of the day yesterday. And maybe today opens lower because of those negative headlines. And maybe you have a target to try and buy from closer to the open price yesterday where, where it popped up. And so uh, maybe anywhere down in this range, okay, between these two lines, might be a spot you're waiting to try and buy. So once the market opens, if it does gap down, maybe you're looking for a price target down here, closer to the top of this gap from yesterday to buy, if indeed you wanna go with that buy signal from the trend analysis we looked at in the market buzz. And you know, I kind of expect that this might pull down with those recent articles, but I don't think a $12 million fine is enough to change the overall trend analysis for a large corporation like Bank of America. $12 million is really uh, a drop in the bucket for them, I think. So uh, could be some negative momentum temporarily to get a better point uh, for the larger trend analysis. And the fundamental news tells me that this could pull back a, a bit before rising more. OK, and so that's what the market buzz can do for you to give you a trading plan on something like a stock like Bank of America, where now I have a reason to wait for a pullback before going with a larger move in the opposite direction. OK, and we could look at any number of stocks or indices or commodities, etc., in that market buzz to have that type of trading plan. And so look at the ones that maybe you're into the most 
in the market buzz and, and come up with a plan each day like I just showed you for Bank of America uh, to enact a trading plan. It makes sense both from a technical analysis perspective, from that trend analysis, but also from a fundamental news per perspective. Okay. I think this is a good place to stop. We've been going nearly 40 minutes. Any questions before we end things? Okay, great. So uh, thank you all for joining. I appreciate the participation. And uh, listen, there are a lot of announcements coming today that you could take advantage of, maybe with some of the strategies we looked at. And also the market buzz looks like there's some opportunities like Bank of America and some others that you could look at to be, have a trading plan on maybe the stocks that aren't moving yet until the market opens. Uh, you know, if it's US stocks, they're not moving yet until the US market opens. The European stocks are already moving. Uh, because that market is open, you could look at those as well uh, for some potential moves. Uh, Michael, you're asking, can I go through one of the signals? Sure, let's do that before we go. Uh, we go through those more in depth in the technical analysis webinar because they're more technical analysis oriented. Uh, and so let's take a look at an active signal. It could be on anything. So I, I do see a signal on gold here. Now we just took a sell trade on gold. Let's see what the signal is. If it will load for us. Let me try clicking it one more time. I think I need to refresh my screen. Sometimes the Wi-Fi in, in, in my office here is uh, a little bit weak. Okay, there it is. So. Uh, the gold signal is uh, a, a buy signal, and if we zoom in on gold, we can see they're suggesting take profits at 2,052, uh, and so that's not much of a move. You see the resistance is up here. So even what's interesting about this signal is they're saying to buy. But they're also saying to take profit starting at 2052, which means the expectation is it might not break that resistance. And that's right here, 2052. Remember, we took a sell and we put our stop loss at 2053 above their take profit spot because they expect that this might hold and start to come down. So uh, this particular signal, it's a short term move, okay? They're expecting that it might bounce off this pivot line. The pivot line is a spot where they say if it breaks below, then the buy signal's off, okay? And it hasn't broken below the pivot line. It looks like it's testing it. If it breaks below 2034, they're saying sell then, which we already preemptively did. Uh, this is a downtrend right now, we can see that. Uh, it's a buy signal, but yeah, I tend to like to see an uptrend occurring before I buy, uh, at least on the small candles. And you know, when I go to 15-minute candles here, it's still dropping. You know, we bought on that Euro USD as a simulation in a larger downtrend, but at least the smaller candles were uptrending. Here, it's not. Okay, I uh, I might put a pending order below 2034 on this signal. If it breaks below the pivot line. That confirms a downtrend, and then they're saying take profit down to 2028, 2020. Okay, that's how I would interpret the signal. Okay, all right, and, and you can take a look at any number of signals uh, and do that that sort of analysis to, to uh, be selective about which signal you'll trade on. I usually like to see that it's trending in the direction of the signal. And, and that my fundamental news review is in line with that, okay? All right, everybody, thank you for joining. Uh, until next time, good luck with your trading.